In this video I discuss a popular chart pattern called the wedge, more precisely the rising wedge pattern and the falling wedge pattern. I will explain what they are, how to recognize them, how to use them as a filter in chart mill to find stocks in which this chart pattern is present, and perhaps most importantly how to integrate them into your own trading strategy to find and trade low risk setups. My name is Christoph, welcome to chart mill. Rising and falling wedges are price patterns in technical analysis. The rising wedge is a bearish pattern, while the falling wedge has a bullish bias. In this regard, they both differ from the symmetrical triangle pattern, which can be bullish or bearish at the same time. A rising wedge is characterized by two converging trend lines. The trend lines are rising in the process, hence the term rising. Successive highs and lows are connected over a period of time. However, the lower trend line rises faster than the upper trend line, and this creates the typical wedge shape. The pattern can occur in a rising trend or in a falling trend. In the first case, it is a reversal pattern. The moment the price falls out of the wedge at the extreme point of the converging trend lines, this can indicate the start of an opposite trend movement. However, a rising wedge can also occur as a continuation pattern in a long-term downward trend. In this case, the main trend is bearish and the rising wedge is a purely temporary price rebound. Once price falls out of the price pattern, the bearish main trend continues. A falling wedge has the same converging trend lines, but in this case the trend lines run downward instead of upward. In this way, successive highs and lows are connected over a period of time. And in contrast to the rising wedge pattern, the upper trend line declines faster than the lower trend line, creating the typical wedge shape for this pattern. Likewise for the falling wedge, the pattern can occur both in a downward and upward trend. Chartmill offers the possibility to screen for rising and falling wedges. The filter can perfectly serve as a basis for a first selection, which can then be further fine-tuned manually. Here are a few recent results of the filter rising wedge short term. To configure the filters, go to the stock screener page and select the indicator step. Then open the drop down menu under chart patterns. The addition ST stands for short term. In this case, Chartmill will search for wedges within a time frame of up to 60 periods. The short term screen is best suited for swing trading. With the regular wedge filters, you will notice that the wedges are drawn over a longer period of time. If the wedge formations are not visible on the chart, it means that the chart settings still need to be adjusted. Choose the main chart tab and click on the plus sign, the blue button. Then click select overlay to add in the lower ticker field. In the drop down menu, scroll all the way down and select support and resistant lines. Now the pattern are visible in your charts. In this way, you can easily create and store different screen filters in the platform based on wedges. For example, suppose you want to create a bearish screen filter with the following characteristics. Stocks worldwide with a minimum price of $3, a minimum volume of 100,000, whose price is below the 20 day moving average, whose fundamental rating is at most 4 out of 10, and which show a sh short term rising wedge pattern. The number of results is obviously limited by the number of filters we used for this screen. But Figro NV, for example, this is a Dutch stock, is a really nice short setup. The price has fallen sharply for a couple of days in a row, and on the day we record this video, the price is at the bottom of the rising wedge pattern. Depending on the further movement, there might be a low risk short setup with an entry below 8.5 and a stop loss at 8.9. With a target at 7.2, you have a risk reward ratio of almost 3. As with any setup, you always have to take into account the general market sentiment. In a rather negative market environment, this is certainly a justifiable short swing trade setup. Now, if you want to save the screen filter, just click the Save Current Configuration button. Give it a proper name and click Save and Close. It's that simple. Now, if you click on the map icon, you will notice the new screen appear at the bottom. 
or you click on your account name at the top right and select My Account. In the next screen you choose Screen and Settings. In here you will also see all your personal screens appear. To be clear, really good rising and falling wedge setups don't happen that often. What is really important is that the two lines of the pattern converge strongly to each other and that one of the two lines has a clearly stronger degree of rise or fall than the opposite line. As a reminder, in a rising wedge, it is the lower trend line of the pattern that rises faster than the upper one. And in the case of a falling wedge, it is the upper line that is falling more sharply than the lower one. In this video, I'll cover two different ways to enter the market after a falling wedge pattern the breakout strategy and the retracement strategy. Let's start with the breakout setup. Take a look at the chart of CMRE on date of April 21st. On the daily chart, only the chart mill trend indicator is visible. Green is bullish, grey is neutral and red is bearish. Since the last week of March, the indicator has been grey, because of the rather sideways movement that the price is making. Furthermore, there is a descending price channel delineated by the two blue lines. Notice how the upper blue line has a clearly stronger rate of decline than the lower blue line. And both lines run towards each other. This leads to the typical wedge shape from which this pattern emerges. A few days later, on date of April 26, the chart looks like this. At the top of the price pattern, a doji candle formed with considerable volume. As a matter of fact, the price opened with a gap up that day. This was a clear first attempt to break through the upper blue trend line. The upper tail of the doji candle is very pronounced and a sign that sellers had the upper hand at that price level. Nevertheless, the price was still able to close that day on a positive note. After that day, it was clear that the high of the doji candle had become a very important price level. After all, if buyers would manage to overcome the high of this Joji candle fairly quickly, the remaining distance to the next price resistance at the level of $10.6 could go quite fast. So we define our entry buy zone just above the high of that last Doji candle. The initial stop loss lies just under the lower line of the falling wedge pattern. Or a more aggressive stop would be just below the last three candles. And finally, our first target zone at the current high. Only three days later, the first price target is already reached. The two bearish hammer candles at the resistance level are obvious signals that sellers are entering the market. Those who do not use price targets to close positions but want to keep positions open as long as possible should at least consider bringing the stop loss up to break even at this point. But not everyone likes breakout strategies. This is exactly why there is a second option when trading wedges. The retracement strategy will not enter at the first breakout, but instead will wait for a price drop. The disadvantage is that you will not always get a chance if the price suddenly keeps rising. The big advantage is that the setup is in terms of risk reward ratio is usually much better. In the same example of CMRE, the price first rose to $11.39 and afterwards the price drops again to the level where it previously broke out of the rising wedge. The $10 price level acts as support. Sellers were trying to push the price down, but the two consecutive hammer candles with long undertails were a clear indication that buyers were entering the market again. The following day, a doji candle formed with an upper and lower tail. Moreover, the closing price was exactly the same as the opening price so there was a lot of price movement involved. These are the ideal conditions for a low risk buy setup. An entry buy zone just above the high of that last doji candle, initial stop loss at the swing low, and the last high at $11.4 as our first target. Eventually the price continued to rise and the first target, which coincided with the top of early May, was reached. After a few days of sideways movement, a long white bullish candle formed whose closing price was above the top that had been in place until then. That was the signal that the stop loss of the long position could be raised at least just below that blue marked zone. At the same time, the position could be extended at that level if desired. Eventually, the price continued to rise to $12.6. So what if you don't use price targets? There are several other possibilities for the exit. 
As shown in these two examples, we have set a price target, but you can also use an ATR stop or a swing point stop. In this case, I have added a 3 average true range stop at the first breakout strategy, the green rising line. Recently, an article was added in our documentation section on the website that digs deeper into the ATR indicator. I have added the link below in the description of this video. And this is a 5 bar pattern swing point stop after the entry with the retracement strategy following the rising wedge pattern. These two exit strategies were already covered in detail in another video from which you can now see the link appearing in the top right corner. These two simple swing trading strategies are based on the daily charts. You can of course apply them to any time frame as long as the pattern is clearly identifiable. A good rule is that you have to look too long on the chart before you see the pattern the setup is probably not really worth it. Definitely keep that in mind. And finally, I would like to draw attention to the fact that the examples that were shown are the most optimal scenarios. In day-to-day -day market conditions, these patterns will most certainly fail on a regular basis. In itself, this is not a problem, as the patterns allows you to enter the market with clearly defined stop losses. And as long as you manage to keep your winners significantly larger than your losers, it is not an issue even if half of the setups would fail. That brings us to the end of this video. A big thank you for watching. Please click the like button if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell if you don't want to miss any future videos. Thanks again and hope to see you later.